Hey, what's up everybody? Jeffrey Way here. In today's video tutorial, we're gonna be working with CodeIgniter. So I haven't done a CodeIgniter tutorial personally in a, a while, so I thought it was time. And it actually came from a request on Twitter about uh, authentication. So creating like a login system can be pretty simple or very complicated depending upon how many different levels you want. For example, once logged in, you could have different tier structures so that uh, one group of people can access maybe this data, but the group above them can access more. But my guess is if you're watching this, most of the time you really just need one level. You need a system where a user can log in and access some data, and that's really all you need. So we're gonna try to build that as quickly as we can today from scratch. So using Structure, which you can get for free on NetTuts, just search for it. I'm going to create a new CodeIgniter directory and we'll call this Authentication, okay? So what that's going to do is it's going to download the latest files of the CodeIgniter framework and place them within here. So let's go ahead and drag this in to MacVim and we are ready to get started. But first, remember as we are working with PHP, we wanna make sure that we have MAMP running on the Mac. If you're on Windows, you can look for WAMP. So if we wanna check that out, let's go to authentication. And now we have our fresh installation all set to go. All right, so let's get started on this. The very first thing is I'm gonna come down to my controllers. And by the way, I'm going to assume that you have a at least a modest level of knowledge working with CodeIgniter. If you don't, check out the CodeIgniter from scratch series. It's a little dated after CodeIgniter 2 came out, but uh, a lot of it is still applicable. So here is the welcome page. And this is the welcome model that loads the welcome view. So if we wanna look at that view, we can come down to application and it's going to be stored within the views directory and you can see welcome message and there's the file here so let's clean this up really quickly uh, we don't need any of this and how about this so we're going to make this our members only page kick ass members only page okay so at the moment anyone can access this page. So we wanna set up authentication where you have to log in in order to access this section. All right, so let's get started. Now that we have that set up, I'm gonna go back to controllers and we're going to create a new controller and we'll call this admin.php. And I'm going to bring in uh, just a little bit of snippet. I encourage you to save something like this to your snippets program and it's whenever you create a new CI controller, it makes sure that people aren't accessing the controller directly and uh, it just runs a quick index function. So we're gonna change this to admin. And if we were to keep it like this, everything's going to be the same. For example, if I were to go to admin, I'm gonna see the exact same page because we're loading it here. But if you wanna check just to make sure it works, there you go. All right, so what we wanna do here first is set up our login page. So we'll do that right now. This load view, and we're gonna call it login view. Okay, next we're gonna come back and we're gonna come down to our views directory, and I'm gonna add that file right now. So let's go ahead and paste in some beginning markup. I'm not gonna be using templates here, we're doing this very quickly, but of course you might wanna use a header and footer template and stuff like that. So this will be the section where the user logs in, puts their email address, their password, and tries to log in. So we'll do that right here, login. And I'm gonna to wanna to take advantage of CodeIgniter's form helper functions. And it allows me to do things like this, echo form open, rather than having to write that out all manually. So we can allow support for this by going into the config section and the auto load section. So I'm gonna scroll down here and you can see this is where we can auto load libraries. Let's make sure we bring in the database library. And next here are the helpers. So the only difference between a library and a helper is just the fact that helpers are, are not classes, they're just functions. So we're gonna take advantage of the URL helper and the form helper. Okay, let's go back into login view. And now we can use this form open. And with the parameter, we're going to specify relatively speaking, where it's going to post. So when they click the submit button, where are we going to direct? And in this case, we want it to post to itself. So I'm just gonna write admin, and that means post to the admin controller, in which case that index function will run automatically. Okay, and now we're going to echo form close. Okay, within here, we need to create, and just for convenience sake, I'm gonna wrap these within paragraph tags. We need to echo a form label. And this is going to accept a couple parameters. The first one is what is the name of the label? And the second one will be what input does it reference? And we'll say email address. And then after that, we wanna echo the form input. 
Now this one's going to accept a couple of parameters. What is the name of the input? Email address. What is the value of it? It's going to be blank for now, though we'll change that shortly. And then the third parameter is any other attributes that you want to pass in. And in this case, a label refers to an ID of an input, not the name. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in as well. So let's come back and if I refresh the page now we can have that and maybe we should put a colon so I'll do that right now. Okay so we have that one set up. Let's yank that and do one more and this time we need to do the password. So we'll pass that in, update these values and then the only, only other thing is of course because this is a password field we don't want to make it regular text we want to make sure they use stars instead. So now if I refresh, can you see I can insert anything I want? And by the way, these are pre-populated just because of my uh, password program. It will not be like that for you. And then the only other thing I want to do while I'm here is very, we're not going to be styling much at all. Minimal label display block. Okay, and that's all we're going to do. Feel free to style that on your own. The last thing, of course, I said that's all we're going to do, and then I did one more, is... Uh, <laughs> echo form submit and the form submit is going to be the name of it and what it says login okay so you fill out the input you fill out the password you click the submit button and that post data will be posted to the admin controller there we go all right so now let's go back to our admin controller and this data is going to be posted here so the next step is we need to determine has the information been posted and we're going to use a form validation to kind of allow for this so with that in mind let's go ahead and load that library load library and this will allow us to ensure that the person does type in an email address and does enter a password so now let's set some rules and we can do that by doing this form validation set rules and the first one is going to be on the input with the name of email address and the second parameter is the pretty form of this. And this is for echoing out an error message. So rather than the email underscore address field is required, it would say the email address. It's just the pretty form that's displayed. And then the third parameter is going to be all of the rules that you want to apply. And you separate each one with a pipe. So in this case, it's required. And also, it needs to be an email address. So we'll say valid email. Isn't that awesome with PHP. I love it. Okay, and the next one we're going to do one more. So we'll just yank that. And this next one is going to be for the password field. And all I want to do here is set it to required. And you know what, let's also do a min length. And we'll say that's four. So they have to insert something and it needs to be at least four characters long. So yeah, if you saw it, it's probably redundant. We can do that. And that implies that it's required as well. So we'll get rid of that right there. Okay, so we've set our validation. Now we need to run it. So we can say if this form validation run, we're going to call the run method on it. And we're going to say if it does not return false, if that turns out to be the case, then validation passed from the DB, which we'll get to shortly. So let's go over this. Calling the form validation class, we call the run method. It's going to apply these rules, and if it does not fail, so if it's not false, then they entered everything correctly, and we can verify their login credentials against the database. But what if it does fail? What if they do enter their email address incorrectly or they leave it blank? We need a way to display that to them. So let's go back to our login view and we'll scroll down here and we're going to have a place maybe right here after the form closes and we'll display the errors. So we'll wrap that within a div with a class of errors and we will do PHP echo validation errors. And that's available to us because we loaded that class. And then if you want to add this as well, we're going to put this all on one line. Color equals red. Okay, so let's try this out now. I'm going to leave both of them blank. Login, and now the email address field must contain a valid email. So now we'll try it, admin at admin.com, and we'll leave password blank. And you know what? Maybe that does get through. Maybe I taught you wrong. Let's try this. Required. I might have just learned something. So click it, leave password blank. Yep, sorry about that. Bad advice. So make sure that if you do min length, you also do required. I assumed it would be implied, but it's not. However, we can do 
three characters, and we know that the minimum length is four. Okay, so cool. With CodeIgniter, we've set up a login form with validation in no time at all. With speaking, it's been a few minutes. But let's try to do this correctly at admin.com, and we'll pass in a gibberish password. And right now, it's posting back to itself because we haven't done anything. But we know that it was successful. So now we can go to the next step, and that means getting the information from the database. But before we can do that, we need to create a database and a table to house all of our users. So you can use PHP MyAdmin or another tool. I'm going to be using a tool for the Mac called Querious. But if you're on Windows, it doesn't matter. Just use PHP MyAdmin. So let's go ahead and log in. And on the Mac, I'm going to have to set my port to 8889. Okay, and so we will create a new database, and we'll call this just demo. Create a new table, and the table name is going to be users. So here we need to have an ID, but I want to make sure this ID is a primary key and that it'll auto-increment, meaning we don't have to specify the ID. It'll increment by one every single time. The next one we need is their first name, and we'll set a length of 40 to be generous, and then we'll do a last name. We also need their email address their password. Now that's going to be stored. We're going to be using the SHA-1 if you've ever heard that. It's an encryption, a pretty powerful encryption. So we'll keep it like that when we enter into the database. And then I always like to do a date created as well. And that lets me know uh, when that account was created. So now we need to do the nulls. Can first name be no? Null? No. No. Email address? Definitely not. Password? No. And the date created, no, because we're auto setting that. And that'll be set to current timestamp. And we're going to set the type of this date equal to timestamp. Note that you cannot use date time and auto set it to the best of my knowledge. All right, so we have an ID, a first name, last name, email address, password, and date created. So we're not going to create a registration page. It'll just take too long. But if you want to do that on your own, you would simply have a view that has each of these inputs, and then when they click Submit, you enter that information into the database. But for now, we'll save that and run this query. We will just manually create an account. So we'll do me, Jeffrey, Way, and then the password, we need to uh, encrypt the password. So we'll do that right up here. And we'll say echo SHA-1 my password and we'll die. Refresh, and there is our encrypted password. So that is what will be stored in the database. All right, so we have created our account. So now, when the user logs in, we need to compare the credentials that the user logged in with against what's in the database. So get rid of that, and we need to create a new model. So we'll go into application, and we can do that within the models directory. And we'll call this adminmodel.php. As with before, I've saved an opening model snippet, and we're going to change this to admin model, and it extends the CI model class. Okay, so this is responsible for interacting with the database to be as generalized as possible. So we'll do public function, and we're going to create a function called verify user. And this method will be responsible for querying the, the database and determining if a row was found. So we need to accept the email address as well as the password that the user enters. So we'll do that right now. Create a new variable called Q and that's going to be equal to this DB. Now remember we have access to the database class because we auto loaded it. We'll say this DB where the email address field is equal to whatever is passed in and also where password field is equal to password. But not just password. Remember, we need to run the SHA-1 method on it. So if they enter my password, it's stored in the database as a long 30 string of characters. So we need to make sure we encrypt that and compare the encrypted version against what's in the database. Uh, just to be safe, we're going to say limit 1. Make sure only one row is returned. And we're going to get from what table? We called the table users. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Notice that these fields correspond to here, email address, password. So select from the database, from the users table, where the email address is equal to what the user types into that email address text box, and where the password is equal to the encrypted form of what they type into the password box. And we're going to get that. 